This lesson 4 will provide an overview of the different architectures present in Precision DAX. The main objective is to understand the different Precision DAX architectures depending on how resistors are internally interconnected and what advantages and disadvantages each architecture offers. A simple DAC can be easily implemented using a binary weight network. The current I is the sum of the individual currents through the input resistors. An n-bit DAC of this nature can be implemented with n resistors. The drawback to such a system is that a range of different resistance values are required, 2 times n minus 1. The resistor ratios need to be tightly controlled to maintain accurate performance and maintain monotonic behavior. This is very difficult to achieve in a production, production environment. The DACs most commonly used as examples of simple DAC structures are binary weight DACs or ladder networks. The simplest structure of all is the Kelvin divider or string DAC. An NBIT version of this DAC simply consists of 2 to the power of n equal resistors in series and 2 to the power of n switches, one between each node of the chain and the output, which makes it a non-practical architecture approach for high-resolution converters. The monotonic output is taken from the appropriate tab by closing just one of the switches. The output of a DAC for an all-ones code is one LSB below the reference. So a string DAC intended for use as a general purpose DAC has a resistor between the reference terminal and the first switch. This is also the architecture used in digital potentiometers. In an ideal potentiometer, all zeros and all ones code should connect the variable tab to one or other end of the string of resistors. So a digital potentiometer well, basically the same as a general purpose string DAC has one fewer resistor and neither end of the string has any other internal connection. The classical architecture has evolved to a segmented approach due to the required number of internal switches for high resolution DACs, making the classical approach not feasible. Using a segmented string reduces the number of resistors required and thus makes the DAC smaller. This architecture is sometimes called a kelvin varley divider and requires two chain of resistors, two to, the, two to the power of n resistors. It is obvious that by connecting a second string of resistors across the adjacent tabs on the first string, we may further subdivide the voltage between the two tabs and thus increase resolution. Since there are buffers between the first and second stages, the second DAC string does not load the first and the resistor in this string do not need to have the same value as the resistors in the other one. Resistor string DAC implementations are inherently monotonic by design and are characterized by simplicity, density and low power consumption. Monotonicity is a key specification for all closed-loop control applications. Having to buffer the main and substring has the potential to introduce linearity errors due to the buffer amplifiers and also introduce an area and power penalty into the user architecture. The output impedance is relatively high at mids codes. Consequently, an output buffer is required to minimize load effects. The output buffer is integrated within the DAC, minimizing the number of external components required to operate the part. The high output impedance also affects the Johnson noise, being higher than compared with other architectures. This architecture offers high levels of density, which combined with the low power consumption and integrated features like buffers and voltage reference offers a real high level of power efficiency. This is the newest string DAC architecture, and it overcomes the shortcomings of previous string DAC architectures. Previous string DAC architectures require the substring to be either buffered or be of a much higher impedance to overcome the loading effects of the substring on the main string. 
With this new architecture, the loading of the sub DAC is not treated as an error, but is built into the overall DAC transfer function. The main string consists of 2 to the power of n over 2 resistors, and the sub DAC consists of 2 to the power of n over 2 minus 1 resistors. Because there are no buffers, the sub DAC appears in parallel with the resistor in the main string that it is switched across and loaded. This drops the voltage across that main string resistor by one less V of the sub DAC, which is exactly what is required. To account for non ideal switches, sub DAC R is made slightly larger than the main DAC R. This architecture allows the manufacture of guaranteed monotonic, high-resolution, low-constant power voltage output DACs in space-saving surface mount packages. The most common DAC structure is the R to R ladder. It uses resistors of only two different values with a ratio of 2 to 1. An NBIT DAC requires two N resistors and they can be laser trimmed in production. This architecture is not monotonic by design and typically requires post calibration or as already mentioned, laser trimming to achieve the required performance. Absolute accuracy is not a key requirement and resistors can have a 20% tolerance, but to yield a monotonic DAC, the resistors need to mod to one part in two to the power of N. The main benefits of using a more complex combination of serial and parallel resistors are that switches are connected to a low impedance source minimizing transients, and the low output impedance generates low output noise. R2R DACs do not integrate output buffers, giving the possibility to customize the DAC performance depending on the required distortion and desired precision. There are two ways in which the R2R ladder network may be used as a DAC, known respectively as the current mode and the voltage mode. In a current steering DAC, the R2R ladder divides the input current into binary weight currents, and these currents are steered to IOD1 or IOD2 by current steering switches. Switches on resistance is low enough to be negligible compared with the R2R ladder resistors. Switch sizes are generally scaled so as not to affect the linearity performance of the DAC by ensuring each switch has the same voltage drop across it. The DAC termination resistor is generally tied to the IO2 line to facilitate the biasing of this node for use in true single supply applications. Characteristic of this structure include fixed reference input impedance. The DAC exhibits a code-dependent output impedance which is not linear with code. Low offset amplifiers are required to maintain linearity. Noise gain varies with DAC code due to variations in the output impedance. Noise gain is the gain seen by the input referred noise and error parameters and results in DNL errors. This architecture is the basis for the multiplying DAC. The DAC multiplies the digital input value by the analog input voltage at the VREF pin. Any applications requiring precision multiplication with minimal zero offset and very low distortion must consider the CMOS R2R DAC as a candidate. In an R2R ladder, it is necessary to have very tight matching between each piece and the sum of the lesser bits in order to maintain monotonic behavior. In a segmented design, these requirements are relaxed, making high-resolution monotonic converters more practical. The most significant bits are decoded to select one of the segments. In the case of a three bit of segmentation, 7 eighths of the current flows in the parallel ladder structure and 1 eighth in the R2R structure. If this were a 14-bit DAC 
with three bits of segmentation, then the R2R structure is basically an 11-bit DAC, and this sets the accuracy of trim required to achieve performance. Therefore, segmentation allows linearity specifications to be more easily achievable. The input impedance is much lower, which means lower distortion. This structure exhibits a fixed input impedance and an output impedance that varies with code, as previously mentioned. Connecting the R2R structure in the manner outlined above is known as voltage switching mode of operation. In this mode of operation, the output is a voltage and not a current. The positive reference gives a positive output voltage and this allows for single supply operation. The DAC input impedance varies with code whereas the DAC output impedance is fixed. The voltage source connected to VREF should have a low dynamic impedance since it must drive a switch load. Since both IOUT1 and IOUT2 are driven from low impedance sources, glitch impulse is reduced. Higher reference voltages will decrease linearity due to reduced drive availability for the CMOS switches. In summary, precision DACs are mainly designed with string or R2R architectures. String DAX architecture allows the manufacture of guaranteed monotonic, high-resolution, low-power DAX in a space-saving surface mount packages. String DAX are mainly designed for static applications, and output buffers are optimized for DC specifications. String DAX are the preferred architecture for multi-channel output DAC due to the higher channel density. For most applications where dynamic performance is not required, for example, level set, a string DAC is suitable. The main disadvantage of string DACs is that they do not offer low noise performance due to the thermal noise generated by all the resistors. There are two ways in which the R2R ladder network may be used as a DAC, known as the current mode and voltage mode. This architecture offers fixed input impedance and a codependent output impedance. R2R DAC offers low noise and better dynamic transients, lower glitches energy with a small settling time and fast slew rates, but at the expense of higher power and lower channel density. The current steering R2R architecture offers constant power consumption variable noise, and flexible current outputs at high speed. On the other hand, the voltage switching mode key features are variable power consumption and low and code independent output noise. And as a last summary note, segmented R2R architecture offers lower noise performance and allows linearity specifications to be more easily achievable.